um, when my, my very best friend just died recently. And um, I, I, when she passed away, this is what they played. Raise a hallelujah. You know? yeah. 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 Just amazing song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Another song which is you know, really glorifying is O oh, Emmanuel. Yes, it's called Emmanuel, but oh, what a song. So we yeah. don't just lift God's voice in heaven. Thank you, Lord.
Okay, one day in Gippsland, that's on the 29th of September. Another night with the church to get together. Have a great night. Yeah, I've heard there's a pretty awesome speaker that night. Right. <laughs> missions offering next week. Come prepared for missions offering next week. Um, celebrating, now this is another important one. We welcome Lynn and Barry back from their holidays. Yeah. 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 We sorry though that they had to return early um, due to the um, passing on of our dear Nadi. And so on Thursday, the 12th, this Thursday, we are having a send off. We are having a celebration of the life of Elsa or Nadi as we know her, Ryan. And uh, we just invite everyone to come along, be there and support Lynn and Barry and the family. And um, if you are available after the service today to help, just there's going to be quite a crowd here. We need to put out all the extra chairs. We need to set up the dining room and have things all ready. So if you're free and available after the service, could you stay back to help set up for that occasion? Thank you very much. So the, the funeral will be at Trap Cemetery at 10.30, followed immediately here at 11.30 for the memorial service. So thank you for that. And um, now we have a plan too to have a Merley night, Merley African night, and that will be held on October the 5th. Is that it? Because I've got my glasses on. There'll be food and fun and fellowship and it'll all be done African style. So um, if you'd like to help with that at all, see Peter. Oh, thank you. I'm through now. <laughs> but um, if you'd like to help that, see Peter. And in the meantime, uh, keep your eyes open and ears open for what's going on. And uh, we'll talk about costs and things next week. But I want you to set that date, 5th of October. Here for an African night is going to be really fun. Dancing, singing, food, and, uh, and a bit of information on our Merlin Education Foundation. So thank you, everyone. That's all the notices for today. And we're going to hand back now to Sandy. Oh, sorry. Someone did give me a late one. <coughs> what does that say? Oh, we have got... All right, an electric keyboard. If you've been wanting to play the piano, and uh, this is your opportunity to get a keyboard from Bert and Tina. We're going to now receive the offering as uh, Sandy continues with the worship.
broken or where we're down or when just life seems too hard to go on, you're there. You're always there. Lord, you're in those high times when life is exciting and things are going on wonderful around us. But Lord, you're also there in the low times of speed. Lord, you comfort us, you strengthen us, you give us the Holy Spirit to do that. And we just thank you that you're just never ending, you're just always there. You're just astounding, you're just wonderful, Lord. We just thank you for your love for each one of us, that you died, that you said Jesus, Jesus died for us.
And Jesus' death and resurrection and ascension have opened the way for us to be partakers of all of his promises. First Peter 5, 7 says, Give all your worries to him because he cares for you. And Philippians 4, 6, which is one of my favourites, says, Don't worry or take no anxious thought about anything, but pray and ask God for everything you need, always giving thanks for what you have. And because you belong to Christ Jesus, God's peace will stand guard over all your thoughts and feelings. His peace can do this far better than our human minds. Amen. Amen. And how much so often we battle yeah. with our minds. Yeah. Our well, thoughts are going around, the worry, the anxiety, all the things happening. You go to bed at night and you try to sleep, but your mind just goes over and over and over and over and you can't settle down because you're just so anxious and worried. <coughs> Last year I read a book called How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. By Dale Carnegie. It was a book that we had in our bookshelf for probably 50 years. We bought it when Jen was actually born at the Colac. We read it once and it's been sitting there all those years. And then suddenly, when I was going through a time last year, the Lord brought me to bring it out. And it was a, something that was very helpful. And it's something I want to share with you because I believe that it is part of the answer to getting victory. Which we've got to learn to live in daytime compartments. You say, what's that all about? Well, one day at a time. The past is totally gone. We can't bring the past back. We can't change it. We can't wish we had it back again or anything like that. The past is the past and it's gone. Amen. And we've got to put it in a big vault and put a bar over it and lock it up and just leave it, don't try to bring it back. And the future's the same. And he goes on to say, put a, put a, a metal barrier there and leave the future. Because the future doesn't come. When the future comes, when tomorrow comes, it's today. And this is interesting because I must have had that in my mind for years because for years I've sort of worn this out, you know, just live for today, put the back and tomorrow doesn't come. And um, so we've got to learn to live for today. When tomorrow's problems are here, tomorrow's, and Jesus went on to say it, he said, don't worry about tomorrow. Each day has enough troubles of its own. Tomorrow will have its own worries. So it's a very scriptural um, thing. Matthew 6, 25, he said, so I tell you, don't worry about the things you need to live, what you'll eat, drink, or wear, Life is more important than food, and the body is more important than the things that you will put on it. Look at the birds. They don't plant, harvest, or save their own garden, but your Heavenly Father feeds them. Don't you know that you are worth much more than they are? And so often there's the little things that trouble us. Where am I going to get this? How am I going to manage that? How am I going to pay the rent? How am I going to find the kids and feed them? He says, don't worry about it. Just give it to God. Trust Him. And that's where faith comes in. We have to trust the Lord in every situation that we're in, no matter what it is. And every person's situation will be different. He goes on to say, you cannot add any time to your life by worrying about Amen. it. Amen. And why do you worry about clothes? Look at the wildflowers in the field. See how they grow. They don't work and make clothes for themselves. And so, in these things, Jesus was teaching us not to be anxious, not to be worried, not to think about all those things, just to look to him and trust him. And Proverbs 4.23 was something that I found very helpful. It says, above all, be careful what you think, because your thoughts control your life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That is so true. Our thoughts can lift us up, our thoughts can put us down. And then Colossians follows the same thing. It says, let the peace that Christ gives control your thinking. Yeah, and that was sort of, you know, when I was reading these, that's something that I hadn't seen so much before, but just let the peace of Christ control your thinking. It is for peace that you were 
were chosen to be together in one body and always be thankful. Thank you, Lord. Let the teaching of Christ live inside you richly. Use all wisdom to teach and counsel each other. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your heart to the Lord. Yeah. You know, music is a great healer of our emotions. Music does wonderful things. The other night, Jake was um, feeling a little bit down. Let's put on a Andre tape. In the Andre area, so you may like him some day. But uh, just listen to that music. And last week, um, actually watching Australia's Got Talent, and there was this women's choir. It was some hundred women, I think. And they were all women that had formed together gradually where they'd been in situations. And this woman got them together in this massive choir, and it was absolutely amazing. And uh, so with um, Jonathan Welsh with the power of hard knocks. Yeah, yeah. Music is a great therapy. And scripture says, let us sing, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. This is one of my favourites. John 14, 27. Jesus said, I leave you peace. It is my own peace I give you. I give you peace in a different way than the world does. So don't be troubled and don't be afraid. And the thing that struck me in that wasn't he just gives us peace. He says, my peace I leave with you. Yeah. <coughs> you may have heard me say that before, but his peace he leaves. So if we need peace, we don't have to keep coming. Lord, please give me peace in this situation. Give me peace in that situation. <coughs> he says, I leave my peace I leave with you. And so what we do is we draw on it. We go into a situation and then we just draw on that peace. We Delve into the scriptures, pray, seek the Lord, and have that peace. Second Corinthians 12 9, but the Lord said, My grace is all you need, only when you are weak, and his strength be made perfect. Yeah. My grace is all you need, only when you are weak can everything be done completely by my power. And Paul said, so I'll gladly boast about my weakness, then Christ's power will stay in me. Second Thessalonians 3 16 says, We pray that the Lord of peace will give you peace at all times yeah. and yeah. every moment. Yeah. And I'm just saying, as we participate in the communion this morning, if you've got anxieties, if you've got worries, if you've got things that are pressing you down, just take a moment to give them to the Lord. Yes, Lord. Hand them over to Him. And as I say, I believe that God has given me this, I believe there's people here this morning that need to hear this. Amen. Give your anxieties and your problems to the Lord and enter into that peace that dwells in you. And as you do that, you'll find a newfound freedom and joy. We've got to switch our focus away from our problems and switch them on to Jesus. Get our focus on Him, who is the answer and the um, one that is the one that is our problem solver. So let's maybe just take a moment to pray quietly before we partake. Father, this morning we thank you that your word is living, it's powerful, it's sharp and many to its sword. And you know each person this morning, you know where they're at, you know what their needs are, you know the things that are weighing them down. But Lord, I pray that as we partake of the bread and the cup, that we'll learn how to hand everything over to you. This is what you died for, Jesus, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We thank you in Jesus' name. Let's partake of the bread.
testified it was the darkest day in all of history. The darkest day as people stood there and mocked and laughed. The devil was rejoicing, but it was also the brightest day in history because of the triumph that came out of that. Lord Jesus, that you came and you willingly gave your life so that we could receive salvation, so that we could be forgiven of all the sins, all the bad in our lives and be set free, so that we could spend eternity with you. It was the greatest day in history, the brightest day. And Lord, I thank you that you were willing to do that for us. Yes, Lord. Lord, to shed your precious blood for us so that we would not have to spend eternity in hell, but that we could choose to live instead in life yes, with you. We are so grateful that you did that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Amen. 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 to give us all things. Mm -hmm. So Lord, knowing your, your provision, mm -hmm. trusting in it, is the means to peace. Mm -hmm. Lord, I just pray you would help us to, to um, uh, let go of wanting to control our own lives mm -hmm. and trust you, Lord. Mm -hmm. you, didn't, you didn't just say you would, would make everything the way we want it. But you said that your grace would be sufficient yes, in it. Yes. You said that you, we could come to you, um, those that labour and are heavy laden, and you would give us grace, you would give us strength. And Lord, in those times, you do amazing works in us. We, we may want to um, get, get rid of them, but Lord, they're a part of your purpose and plan. And we just thank you that you work all things together for good. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. <coughs> That's so true. Um, back in January, back in January this year, I came out of hospital and I was, I was home on my own for a couple of months because um, one was about to joke and, <coughs> and uh, just amazing little fact that things have gone on in my life. Yeah. And I have the time to seek him. To just let him take control mm -hmm. of my life in a new way. Thank you, Lord. And it's just amazing. Thank you. Thank you. something because um, everything in this meeting today has been all in line with what God's given me to prepare to speak about. And yeah, thank you Lord. Just do your work in us. Do your work that you've begun to do and you're continuing to do. Thank you Lord. Amen. It's been about nearly five months since I've, since I've um, preached a message at all. So, um, hmm, I've got a lot to say. Yeah. <laughs> no, no worries. <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> I do have a lot to 
side, but I'll try to keep it to the limits. I want to ask, we, we heard from Joan about people who are burdened down, and um, we've, uh, we've been very conscious of that. Um, are, you, are you burdened down? Are you, are you enjoying your relationship with God? Are you experiencing Holy Spirit joy and peace in your life? Do you love being a child of God? Yes. Absolutely. Okay, well, it looks like I don't need to preach this message today. all okay. You know, I've heard people say, I've been trying for so long to be a Christian, but it's just not working for me. And one man said, I'm just sick of feeling guilty all the time because I'm not getting it right. So today, I want to talk about no condemnation in Christ. Thank you, Father. And you know the verse, don't you? Yeah. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Yeah. We, we could probably all say it together. We can, it's up on the screen. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Now, we all know this verse, don't we? It's a, um, it's a very famous verse. It starts off a very famous chapter in, uh, in Romans chapter 8. There's been a lot of preaching on it. My aim today is to deal a fatal blow in the Lord to the condemnation that still plagues yeah. some of us. And I think probably most of us, in one way or another, uh, suffer with, with condemnation and, and doubts about things. Why are there so? Why are so many Christians so stressed out, so worried about how they're performing as Christians, how they measure up as Christians, or to use a, a word that we probably don't use as much as we did when I was a bit younger? Why are so many Christians so uptight? Yeah. Isn't it true? We can get very uptight, and, and sometimes, you know, I remember thinking. I've got to be happy because if I'm not happy, I'm not going to be a good witness. You know, but it shouldn't be a case of having to try to force myself. I should be living in the joy of the Lord. Absolutely. So I want to tackle three things that can easily rob us of our joy in our Christian walk. And the first thing is, I think that we are still, sometimes, still too sin conscious. Because, you know, what we know that God wants us to be holy. Yes. You could quote the scriptures, but I've got three scriptures here. 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16 says, But he who has called you is holy. You also be holy in all your conduct. Yes, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. Yes. Couldn't be much clearer. Yes. Hebrews 12, 14 says, Pursue peace with all people, and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Mm -hmm. Holiness is important. And the verse that I've kind of been thinking about a lot over the last several months, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, says, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. Perfecting holiness? <laughs> That's what it says. Perfecting holiness. But you know, if, if you're a bit like me, there are plenty of times when you don't necessarily feel all that holy. I won't ask for a show of hands. I can put my hands up though. You know, we might have done something that we knew was not right. Maybe... Maybe we um, were on the telephone with one of those phone calls where you have to go from one place to another. Maybe you lost your temper on the telephone. I've done that. Maybe we lost it over some tricky thing with the computer when the computer wasn't doing what it was supposed to do. Anybody ever had that experience? <laughs> A few people have, yeah. Or maybe we just missed our prayer time one morning. Or maybe we haven't actually been reading anything in the Word of God for a little while. And we start to feel like we've disappointed God yet again. And there's this character called Satan 
who is otherwise known as the accuser. And if you're starting to think that you're a failure, he's going to be very quick to agree with you. And he's going to be on your case. And uh, maybe you sort of think, well, you know, I've been walking with the Lord for a while now, I should be a lot more holy than what I am. And maybe sometimes we, th we sort of think, well, you know, those other Christians at church, they're all so much more holy than me. And if they really knew what I was like, they probably wouldn't even want to know me. I don't know whether you've ever thought like that. Hopefully not. But you know, if, if Satan thinks that he's getting through to you, he's going to even try to tempt you to just walk away from fellowship and just give the whole Christianity thing away. That's his aim. That's what he wants to do. He wants to cut you off from the fellowship in the body of Christ. But you know what? Satan is a liar. Great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the truth is, there are no limits to God's love for you. Yes. Understand that. There is no limit to God's love for you. There are no limits on the forgiving and cleansing power of the blood of Christ. And there are no limits to the number of times you can run back to your Heavenly Father for forgiveness. There are no limits on God's grace over your life. There's a song that I've got on my computer that I've been listening to a few times. It says, I ran to the Father again and again and again and again, over and over again. Whatever you need, however many times you need, you can run to the Father. Yes. Are there some people who um, exhaust the grace of God? Are there some people for whom the grace of God just ceases to exist? What about people who harden their hearts against God? Does God's grace run out? Actually, no. It's not God's grace that's run out in that situation. God has an unlimited supply of grace and love. Absolutely unlimited supply of grace and love. But there may be some people who move so far away from God that they're no longer in a place to receive yeah. that grace yeah. and that love. Yeah. We know that Cain in the Bible came to a place like that. It says that he wanted to repent, but he couldn't. He was too far away from God. And I do not believe that that applies for one second to anybody that's here today. Because you're here because you're seeking God, right? Yeah. You're here because God is important to you. 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 to 9. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Can yeah. I say all? All. All, all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So all, all unrighteousness cleanses us. All sin, all unrighteousness. You know, it does not matter if you sin once, or one million times, the blood of Jesus still cleanses when you come to Him in repentance and faith. Amen. In my experience of God, God never says, okay, I'll forgive you and cleanse you this time, but you know, this is 85 times now that I've had to forgive you for the same thing, so don't do it again, because I guarantee I can't guarantee to forgive you next time. Has God ever said that to you? No, he doesn't keep count. For starters, God promised that he will not remember our sin. Can you imagine that? God, who is the ultimate intellect, wisdom, knows everything, he says, I'm not even going to remember your sin. <laughs> Lots of silly things lately. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Uh, even in the music practice, I dropped my plectrum down inside the hole in my guitar and I was shaking, <laughs> trying to get the plectrum out of the guitar. That was my place. Yeah. And now I knock over, I did 
quite get those tickets that are there, but still, we're still okay. Sorry. No <laughs> Selling the spring cleaning already. Yeah, that's right. The, the working bee has started this thing. Your cup runs over. Oh, goodness me. Isaiah 43, verse 25. It says, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Now you might remember that I'm not over the glass, but God will not remember my sins. <laughs> but you know what? If God says, I'll forgive you this time, but don't do it again, or, you know, I might not be able to forgive you next time, he would be denying the efficacy, the effectual power of the blood of Christ. Yes. He would be denying the cross, and he would make himself a liar. And you better move it away from me. Move it away from yeah. God can never be a liar. We looked at 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 earlier, which talks about perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And maybe some of you might say, you know, it helps me to think that God might not forgive me because, you know, the, the fear of God helps me to perfect holiness. The, the fear that God might not forgive me next time is my motivation for holiness. Um, as, though, as though fear and um, threats from God were what you need to motivate you to live righteously for Him. But if that's what you think, if you think that's what living in the fear of God or perfecting holiness in the fear of God means, I would say you don't have any concept of the goodness of God. When the Bible talks about the fear of God, at least in the New Testament, it's not talking about some fear that God is one day going to give up on you. It's not talking about a fear that God might be against you. It's actually the knowledge that he never, never, ever will give up on you. Yeah, yeah. It's actually the, the, the reverence and the understanding of who he is, that he is eminently trustable. You can trust him. Yeah. He means what he says. Yeah, thank you, Lord. So it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. Yeah. That's Romans chapter 2, verse 4, where Paul says, Do you despise... The richness, the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, yes. not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. Mm -hmm. You know what that's saying? That's saying God puts up with us. All the things that we do wrong, all the glasses of water that we knock over, all the silly things that we do, he is long suffering, he puts up with us. All of the times when we go wrong, he, is for, he has forbearance towards us. And it's his goodness that leads to repentance. It's, we don't need a threat that God is there with a big stick if we do something wrong. That's not how we are to live our life. We live according to the wonderful, glorious promises of God. It's not a negative thing, this Christian walk. It's a wonderfully positive thing. Because we live according to these promises. So there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. None. None at all. Absolutely no condemnation. Nothing. Sometimes I've seen people will ask forgiveness of someone else. And, and just sometimes people say, oh, okay, I forgive you. But, you know, the expression on their face says, I forgive you, but, you know, don't do it again. Yeah, you better not ever do that again. You know, God is not like that. God does not say... I forgive you, but from here on, you're on notice. <laughs> you know? He doesn't say that. Um, he, 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 um, the benefits of what Jesus did on the cross are not conditional on us doing, on us doing better next time. i say that again. The benefits yes. of Jesus dying on the cross for us, those benefits are not conditional on us doing a better job next time. 
Hallelujah. No one can prove for me from Scripture that that's, that's the case because I don't believe it is. I am free. There is no condemnation. You know what? I've decided that if Jesus doesn't condemn me, then I'm not going to accept condemnation from anything. Not even from myself. And as for the devil, well, he doesn't even get a look in because I'm too busy rejoicing in who I am in Christ Jesus. I am righteous in Christ because of Jesus. There's no condemnation on my life. If you're in Christ, there's no condemnation on you. Hallelujah. Now I need to be a little bit honest to go into the second point. Because the second point is we're too performance conscious. Now, I have always been, I think, a fairly achievement-oriented sort of person for most of my adult life anyway. If I'm late for a meeting, I'm... I'm Really gets upset. I really get upset about it. Or if I have something important to do, but I end up wasting time instead, I've always tended to get really upset with myself. Uh, just ask Sandy. No, don't ask Sandy. She'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, a ministry journal on my computer. I still do. But for a long time, there was a heading on that saying, "What have I achieved today?" And if I hadn't achieved what I thought I was supposed to achieve for the day, I would go to bed miserable and angry. <laughs> even if I, if I didn't even write anything in the journal, I would go to bed thinking, oh, how undisciplined I am. And um, I, I hate to say this, but during the day, there were times when I would go into uncontrollable fits of rage. And I wouldn't even know why. I would not be able to control it. Eventually I found out that these fits of rage that I was experiencing was because there were simple little things that I thought I should easily be able to do and I managed to mess them up. <laughs> and ingrained in me, somewhere deep in me, was the idea that if I couldn't work the TV remote, or I couldn't find a biro that would work, or I couldn't push a chair in properly, then those stupid little things meant that I was a completely worthless person. And that would make me angry. I had wrong expectations as to how things work in life. Wrong expectations on myself, and sometimes I had wrong expectations on other people. So. Here's a question for you. If I get home from working in the shop and realise that there was that letter I was supposed to post on the way home that I got all the way home and completely forgot about sending the letter, or if I'm supposed to be working on the church history ready for the uh, 50th anniversary next month and I end up watching a movie on TV instead, <laughs> or if or if some driver in the road does something stupid and I call a person a bad name, do those things mean that God's sovereign plan comes crashing down and that God has to say, Oh no, what am I going to do now? <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? No, those things don't affect God's plan at all. We can get so intense. We, we need to, I, I, I certainly needed to lighten up, loosen up, relax about things. And it's a message I think that we all need to hear. Some, some of the stuff that happens in our life just doesn't matter. If you forget something or you've got something wrong, it's not worth, as I say, getting your knickers in knot over. Okay, you've had a bad day? So what, according to what Joan said before, that day will be over. And then you've got a whole new day yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, really tomorrow cool. is a whole new day. There's a, there's a book in our shop. Never read the book, but I've read the front cover a few times. <coughs> and the, the, the front cover says, don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah, I've read that. It's all small You've stuff. read that book, right. And then there's a subtitle on the front page. So really the, the cover says, don't sweat the small stuff, and it's all small stuff. Yes. Well, you know, I'm not sure that I agree that it's all small <laughs> stuff, because um, you know we could make a really serious mistake, or we could hurt someone, 
and in those situations, we have to deal with those things. It's, it's not all stuff that you can just say, oh, it doesn't matter. But you know what? The point is well made. We are not, we don't have to be perfect. I, I, I would just not be able to do anything if I felt I had to be perfect because I'm not perfect at anything that I do. We don't have to be perfect to be loved by God. We don't have to be perfect to be accepted by God. And we all do wrong things sometimes. So what? If I do something wrong, I know people are happy to, to just, you know, forgive me for that, just as I forgive other people when they do something wrong. God is able to turn even our stupidest failures, <coughs> the dumbest things that we do, our mistakes, God is able to turn all those things for good. <coughs> the devil may have meant it for evil, but God has a knack of turning things around for good. We've already heard the scripture today, Romans 8, 28. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, who are the called according to his purpose. Yes. So I don't beat myself up as much as I used to. I'm not anywhere near so performance, performance conscious now. To quote a song from a popular Disney movie, I just let it go. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you that God is not upset at what you did. God is not losing sleep over what you did or what went wrong in your life. In fact, I don't think God sleeps at all. He doesn't need to sleep. But if he did, he wouldn't lose any sleep over what you've done. He's got it all under control. <coughs> he knew what was going to happen and it's already his grace already covers it. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, Love covers a multitude of sins. So we don't get all uptight about something that's past. We can't ever change it. And God's not upset about it, so why should we be upset about it? Be a bit more kind to yourself. Let it go. Don't be so performance <coughs> conscious. It's not about impressing God. You can't impress God with how holy you are. You're, you're not going to be a patch on how holy God is. He loves you anyway. Don't worry about impressing other people. And it's certainly not about worrying about, about impressing ourselves. Yeah, of course there's a balance. We're not supposed to go through life carelessly. There's all sorts of um, serious issues that we take to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Another scripture that's already been quoted today is 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all our cares on him because he cares for us. So he's talked a bit about how there's no condemnation in Christ and our frustration and mistakes are actually not the end of the world. Isn't that good news? And we can trust God in the chaos of our daily lives. There's a, a Superman picture that we can bring up. In one of the Superman movies, Lois Lane is falling from a tall skyscraper. And of course, Superman flies down and catches her. And he says, don't worry, I've got you. And you know what she says in the movie, don't you? Yeah, who's got, who's got, got you? <laughs> yeah, but who's got you? And I think that you can almost sort of see her saying that in that picture there. <laughs> when God says to you, don't worry, I've got you. <laughs> it means it. When he says, don't be anxious, trust me, I've got this, it's true, he means it. So, I've got time, there's one more thing I'd like to say. Point number three, sometimes we're too conscious of this kind of divide between the natural and the spiritual. And what I want to suggest is that you and I, we don't go backwards and forwards between being a spiritual person and a natural person. In five minutes' time, we're back to being a spiritual person, then we're a natural person again. I think sometimes we draw a false line between what we do in the natural and what we do under the leading of the Holy Spirit. In other words, sometimes we do things that just seems like a natural thing to do, but it's actually the Holy Spirit working through us. We are spiritual people. Yeah. If we have Jesus, if, we, if we've asked Jesus into our life, and if we've been filled with the Holy Spirit, 
We are not natural people anymore. We are supernatural people. We are spiritual people. And I think sometimes as we walk with God, the distinction between the natural and the spiritual becomes less and less clear. Maybe today, somebody might come out for prayer, for healing. And maybe Pastor Glenda or someone will come and, and lay hands on you for healing. And speak healing over you in the name of Jesus. Now when you get healed, is that, is that, is that Glenda or whoever it is? Or is it God? God? Well, it's God, but it's both. It's God working through. It's God working through the person who prays for you, isn't it? Absolutely. We can't heal a person, but we can be obedient to what God says and lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So we have a part to play in a miracle. That is so exciting. You know, it looks very excited. Or you might be, you might um, hear that someone has just come out of hospital and you think, oh, they might need a nice cooked meal. So you cook an extra meal that night and take the extra meal around for them. Was that God or was it you? Both. It's both, isn't it? Yeah. It's not either or, natural or spiritual. It's God's love reaching out to someone through you. You might be talking to a friend. Maybe a friend needs to hear about Jesus and you, with the Holy Spirit's help, you're sharing about your faith in Christ. Or maybe you're talking with someone and you notice that they're looking a bit upset. There's a bit of a tear in their eye. So you reach out with some kind word of comfort. And somehow you just happen to come up with the right word that just leaves those people. They go away with, with hope in their hearts. And they go away with a bit of a spring in their step. Because something about what you said, or your touch, has made them feel better. Is that you, or is that God? It's both, isn't it? Even if this sermon has blessed you in some way, the blessing is from God. But you also know that I've spent some time preparing all of this too. So there's a little bit of it, a little bit of me in that blessing. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing to be ashamed about. Now, you know, sometimes people say, Oh no, it wasn't anything of me. It was just all of God. Now, I understand that attitude. But it's kind of all, in a way, denying who we are as, as children of God. Amen. Yeah. And you know what? Being a vessel that God uses, I don't think there's any greater privilege that we can ever have in this That's life. That would be the greatest privilege, to pray for someone and there's a miracle, they get healed. Or to speak with someone that's down and out and miserable and, and you brighten their life. What a tremendous privilege. Yeah. Or to speak with someone who doesn't know the Lord and they end up coming to know Jesus. Oh, Bless you, Jesus. I mean, we are an awesome people. Yes. Hallelujah. Romans 8.1 says that there's... It says there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit. Yeah. Is that a condition? Yeah, is, is God putting a condition on the no condemnation message? Is it if we walk according to the spirit and not according to the flesh? Yes, it is. Two things. First of all, that, past, that little phrase at the end of Romans 8 1 was not in the original text. It was added in, in some Bibles, to that text. Really, the, that verse just says, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. And they've just added that in from verse 4. But in verse 4, and in verse 9, if you go back, I'm not going to look at it now, but if you go back and look at Romans 8, um, it's actually very clear that Paul says, you are not in the flesh, you're in the Spirit, if the Spirit of Christ is living in you. And if you don't have the Spirit of Christ... You're not even there at all. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we are naturally supernatural. Yeah. yeah, that'd be a good thing to <coughs> talk to someone next to you. You're naturally supernatural. Yeah. Or supernaturally natural, whichever the case may be. <laughs> yeah, you can operate in the flesh, but that's not who you are. If you receive Jesus into your life, you are a supernatural being with supernatural power residing in you. 
Hallelujah. Loving God and following Jesus is the natural way of life for us now. In 2 Corinthians 7, we looked at that verse mentioned it a couple of times. It talks about, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. We use soap or detergent or um, you know, whatever, shampoo. <laughs> we use whatever we get. So, we use soap to, clean, to cleanse our bodies. We use God's Word to continually cleanse our spirits. So that means even in the process of becoming more holy, we have a part to play. We apply the Word in our life. If you want to grow in the Lord, you apply the Word in promises over and over again. So don't get anxious about being in the flesh or in the spirit. Because if you're born again by faith in Jesus, you are a spiritual yeah, person. Yeah. And you know what? You just have to be what God says you are. Amen. It's that simple. Yes. We make it too complicated. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 says it's God. I love this verse. I can never remember where it is, but I love the verse. And I've got it here. It's Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. So it's him, he works in me and in you so that we want to do the right thing by him. So bringing this to a conclusion, and we are going to have a time for prayer if anybody wants to come out for prayer. I think I've pretty much written this down on the, on the screen. There really is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. It's time to let go of things that bring us under condemnation and rob us of our joy in the Lord. Your sins have been fully and totally dealt with. And if you haven't come to Christ, today is your day to come and get your sins completely dealt with once and for all. It is not about how well you and I are performing as Christians. It's not about our performance at all. And if you've been born again by receiving Jesus into your life, and if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you are a genuinely spiritual vessel for, for God. Amen. There is no condemnation. Amen. I want to just put out an invitation. Um, we might just... Um, sing the last song that we sang just again. Maybe Sandy might just be able to come up and help us lead that. And, and uh, Jackson and Care for sure. But come out now. First of all, come out if you've never received Jesus as your Savior. I don't know for sure if there's anybody here who's never asked Jesus to come into your life as Savior and Lord. If that's you, Come out today. Don't put it off. Just come out today and receive him because it is the, it is the best life that you can ever have. And it's truth. And it's, it's the only way to deal with sin. But if you just want to shake off guilt and shame of condemnation that you were never meant to, be, to carry, if you've been carrying stuff that you shouldn't be carrying, condemnation, if you've been letting the enemy get words in your ear, or if you've been too worried about your performance and, and, and you're not, you know, you think for some reason that you have to be perfect in order to be acceptable to God, just come and give that away. If you want prayer, if you want someone to pray for you, maybe Pastor Glenda and a few people that can uh, be available to pray, and just catch their eye and say, indicate, yes, I would like some prayer. If you just want to come out and kneel and just do business with God without anybody praying for you, that's fine as well. Let's just let's just get rid of stuff that's, that we've been carrying that we shouldn't be carrying. Just catch the leader of someone's eye if you if you want to get some prayer. You can get prayer for healing, you can pray for any particular thing that is that's weighing you down. But come out for prayer just to be seeing this song again.